Well, hello. It's Tuesday already again. Can you believe it, guys? The month of May is swimming by so fast. And I'm just so super excited tonight uh, just to be back to encourage you guys, you know, and to get your encouragement too. So I just want to let everybody know who's tuning in now, live or later. It's your girl, Kira Sheree. Kira means shining light and Sheree means beloved. And I am here just to stop your day, to, to interrupt your beginning of your week and to give you some good news, to give you some encouragement, just to nudge you a little bit, to push you, to challenge you so that you can know that when God asks you to wait, that it's always for a reason, it's for a season. And tonight we're going to talk about stop being nosy. Keep your eyes on your own paper. God asks you to wait. He's asking you to wait for a reason. So we're in part three of what happens when God asks you to wait. And tonight we're going to be asking our questions to ourselves. Stop being nosy and just wait on God. But before we get started, we have the awesome privilege of actually talking to God today. And if you've not talked with him yet today, it's Tuesday. It's already 630 in Central Standard Time. If you've not stopped your day and just told God, thank you. Can you just stop with me right now and do it? Let's petition heaven. Father God, in Jesus name, Lord, we thank you for being sovereign. We thank you for being good to us. God, we thank you for this Tuesday night. We thank you, God, for all that you are going to speak to us, God, how you're going to encourage us, Lord, that you are in this with us, that we are not alone. And that because we have our trust and our faith in you, God, you are going to strengthen us as we are in a waiting season. Lord, I ask that you would be with every person right now who may be sick in their body, who may be confused about what decisions to make. Lord, I ask that you would strengthen every leader that's ministering your word, God, whether that's on, on a media network or in a pulpit or maybe just a good Samaritan on the side of the road. God, we ask that you would touch our earth and that you would be with us, Lord. God, we ask right now in Jesus' name, that you would visit every sick person and that you would encourage every downhead in Jesus name. And Lord, we're so careful to give you all the glory, all the honor and all the praise because it all belongs to you, God. You're so faithful to us. You're so worthy of all of our praise, God. Every blessing, every good thing in our life, it comes from you. And so asking, asking you now, God, to be with us as we spend a little bit of time with your word, and certainly touch every person that's watching God. Say something through me that will encourage them to know that you are speaking directly to their situation. In Jesus name, amen. Well, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Kira Sheree. If you're watching now, live or later, hop in the comments. Say, what's up, Kira? We're in part three of what happens when God asks you to wait. Now, we have gone through a lot of this series already and we're now in week three and we're talking about the part of it that starts to become a little bit more personal and that is being nosy. Somebody say, stop being nosy, stop being nosy. Pay attention to your own assignment. Pay attention to what God has asked you to do. So again, my name is Kira Sheree, Kira means Shining light and Sheree means beloved. I want to give a few shout outs tonight. We have uh, we are repping the Kansas City Monarchs uh, here in Kansas City. They've got a brand new field over in West Wyandotte County. Uh, I know the Royals are playing, so tonight it's all about baseball. But just before you settle down, just before you settle in, this is part three of what happens when God asks you to wait. Now, if you are watching now, live or later, I want you to hop in the comments if you've watched the first session. The first session, we went over the word wait. The W was for wisdom. The A was for our attitude. I was for us to walk in integrity. And T is to trust God while we're waiting. And then last week, we talked about all kinds of things that happen when we're waiting and who needs to be with us and that sometimes God is allowing that waiting process to happen so he can move people out of the way because he knows that where you he's taking you next. Somebody may be in your situation that is not invited to the next part of your life. Come on. Listen, if you're paying attention, I want you to get in the comments and say, God has asked me to wait and I'm going to wait. So tonight, part three is stop being nosy. 
Stop being nosy and wait. You know, it's so interesting because we live in a time where all of us have a view into everybody's life, especially if they're on social media. We get to see some part of their life, whether that's all the way real. Somebody said sometimes social media can be plastic, meaning it can be fake. But we're still even seeing that fake part of what you want us to see. But when you're in a waiting season, if God has asked you to wait and he's got you waiting for a reason, it's really, really easy to start comparing your weight and your view and your lane and your assignment to what you see somebody else doing. And I want you to know that God wants you to be encouraged to not be nosy. He don't want you paying attention to what everybody else is doing because it gets you off track. It gets you thinking that God has forgotten about you. It has you comparing. So tonight I want to give you three things. Somebody say three things for everybody that's watching now live or later. This is part three. What happens when God asks us to wait? And I know that this subject matter is not an easy matter to swallow. It's certainly not an exciting one because we want things right now. We don't want to wait. We don't want to process we don't want to sit down. We don't want to quiet ourselves. We don't want to hear from God. We don't want to listen to what someone else is asking us to do. We don't want to be patient. We want it to happen and we want it to happen quickly and we want it to happen the way we want it to happen. But how many of you all know that when God is asking you to wait, he's after something deeper and richer and greater in your life? It's a bigger blessing. And so the wait needs to be a little bit longer. It's something that's going to affect more people. And so God wants to make sure that you're prepared. And in your wait season, you can get nosy. You can get in a position where you start comparing and being worried about whatever somebody else is doing while you're waiting. So let me give you these three points of what happens when God asks us to wait. So point number one is, I want you to ask yourself, what is God asking you to do? While we're waiting, we talked about having a good attitude and not being all upset and thinking that the wait is punishment. We have to remember that while we're waiting, there is also so many wonderful good things that are happening in our lives. There are so many other things that we could be doing while we're waiting. After you position yourself to wait, I want you to know that God still has something for you to do while you're sitting there. He doesn't want you sitting there twiddling your thumbs. He is asking you to do something. So while you're waiting, the first thing you can do to not be nosy is to ask yourself, what is God asking you to do? Somebody say that in the comments. What is God asking me to do? Ask yourself that. What has God asked you to do? See, nine times out of nine or 10 times out of 10, five out of five, however you want to cut it, God has asked you to wait for a reason. So he's trying to process some things for you. So maybe he's asking you to wait. And while you're sitting down, he's saying, why don't you work on your credit? Why don't you work on how you strategize your finances? Why don't you work on how you think about your money and what your, what your real bottom line needs to be? While you're waiting, why don't you clean up some of that debt that you have? Now, I know this is not a shouting message, but what I'm telling you is something that's going to help you while you're waiting. You don't need to focus on what anybody else is doing because God has asked you to do something in the wait. He's trying to get you in a better position. So what has God asked you to do? Put it in the comments. When we start talking about things like finances, people get quiet because that's a part of integrity. That's a part of how we actually operate. God, I, I promise this is so, so good. This is not exciting, but this is vital. Somebody say it's vital. It's vital. It's vital. When God asks you to pay attention to how you steward your money, 
chances are that in your next season, when you come out of your waiting season, there's probably some more money that's going to be coming to you. If God has you in a waiting season and he is asking you to think about how you how you operate with your credit and where your credit score is, chances are is that he's trying to prepare you so that you can be the lender and not the borrower so that you can actually attain some collateral so you can move forward in life. Maybe he's prepping you to buy a house. Maybe he knows that you're going to need to buy a car. Perhaps he's ready to move you into that business, but but your mind is not prepared because you won't be still and wait on the Lord. Every time you get an increase, you blow it. Oh my goodness. This is so good. The question is, what is God asking you to do in your waiting season? And how do you not be nosy? You're sitting over here waiting and you watching Sister Johnson get a new car. So you all worried about what God is doing for her and you're not worried about what he has asked you to do. Beloved, God has a plan. And so if he has asked you to wait, he has also asked you to do something. Somebody put in the comments, say he has asked me to do something. One thing that you can always do while you're waiting is to keep your head down and to keep your eyes forward. You don't need to be looking up here and looking over there and all up here. One of the things that happens when you golf, I don't know if there's any golfers that are watching today, but sometimes when you golf or all the time when you golf, you wanna keep your head down and you wanna make sure that your eye is on the ball. But because wherever your head is and wherever your eyes is, that's where your ball is going to go. It's the same thing in the spirit. If you will keep your head down and if you will pay attention to what God is asking you to do, keep your eyes forward, keep your eyes on your paper, keep your eyes on your assignment, you're going to end up wherever God is taking you. So while you're waiting, you got something to do. Somebody say, I got something to do. I have something to do. That's why you can't be nosy. <laughs> That's why you can't be worried about what somebody else is doing because you got stuff to do. You got plenty to work on. Somebody say, I got plenty to work on, Kara. There's plenty to work on. There's plenty to work on. Head down, eyes forward, point number one. What is God asking you to do? Oh, he's asking you to do something. But what is he asking you to do? The analogy was credit, but it could be anything. If you're, when you're in your waiting season, because you, you may be in one now and then he'll move you into another waiting season later on because he knows what happens if you wait properly, that he works some things out of you to work some things in you. Somebody say that God work it out so you can work it in. That's so good. God work it out so you can work it in or work it in me, God, so you can work it out. Whatever that is, it's a process. It's something that God is trying to funnel through your thoughts first and then through your actions. That's why you can't be nosy because he's got something specifically for you and got nothing to do with your neighbor and husbands and wives. It don't have nothing to do with your spouse. Sometimes when God has you in a waiting season, it's because he's trying to work on you, but you are so worried about what he told your husband. Okay. <laughs> Nobody's talking back to me tonight. Get in the comments. Say it's about me. This ain't about nobody but me. I have to pay attention. Head down, eyes forward. Point number one. Point number two. This is why it's so important that you stop being nosy because comparison is so dangerous. It's a very, very dangerous thing. It lends and it leads itself to jealousy. It leads to bitterness. It leads to envy. And it puts you in a position that you have completely walked away from your waiting season and you all over here gossiping and backbiting and trying to figure out what such and such is doing. This is for someone. You're trying to ma maneuver and manipulate and find out, well, what sister, I saw sister Kira got this and sister Johnson did that and brother such and such, you're comparing. Now you start comparing what God has written out for your life, which is a personal plan. Somebody say it's personal. It's personal. And God has written out your personal order. He has written out the specific thing that he wants from you. 
and you are over here comparing that to whatever's going on with somebody else's life who may or may not even have a personal relationship with the Lord, who may or may not be even checking in with God to see if this is what God wants for them. So when you start comparing, you get dangerous and you go back to that position of getting out of your own lane. How many of you have a car where you have lane assist? You push the button and the car is so intuitive. The car is so smart and intelligent. It's equipped with all the cameras and all the sensors that when you get out of the lane that you're in, it starts to pull you back into your lane. It's the same way in the spirit. God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, they are your lane assist. They're saying to you, don't be comparison about what's going on over in this lane. Stay right here. Stop being nosy. Don't worry about what nobody else is doing. While you're waiting, work on your own paper. Work on your own issues. Work on your own future. Sometimes waiting is not about a bad thing in your life. Sometimes it's preparation for something that's good and it's coming to you. Sometimes God isn't always trying to sit you in the corner and, and have you waiting because you're doing something he doesn't want. Sometimes it's, hey, you're getting ready to get off on your exit. So you better stay in the right lane because it, it's time now. We got to go. It's here. You're ready. You're up. You're next. So allow God to be your lane assistant. Comparison is dangerous. And not only is it dangerous, it has a way of creeping up on you. Just like when you're looking down at your phone and you're supposed to be driving. Just like when you're looking down at your phone and you're supposed to be listening to your children talk. Just like when you're looking down at your phone and you're not listening to the people who are around you. Let me, I'm going to just, cause you know what? Cause this is, this is, I think this is my life. I think it is. I think it is. I've yielded myself to the Lord, but I'm going to insert this real quickly. If you are in the presence of a person, this is just old fashioned courtesy. If you're in the presence of a person and you're on your phone, but you're sitting across from an individual that's live and they have taken an opportunity to be in presence and in space with you, please put your phone away. I know that that's an old fashioned mindset. And I know that a lot of times we think we can pay attention to the text and listen to them, but it's almost disrespectful to say, I'm more concerned about something that's arbitrary, that's not real, that is not tangible, that is not having any real effect on what's going on in my life right now uh, uh, versus this human living, breathing person that's in front of me. Talking about lane assist. Do you know you could be waiting in a room with someone who God has you there with them on purpose? And you're so consumed with Facebook and Instagram and your, and your text messages and checking your Google calendar and the weather and everything. We've gotten so far away from being in tune with what's going on with us live and in person in the rooms that we're in. Perhaps God has you waiting at that dentist's office because there's an actual person there that he wants you to talk to. Maybe there's somebody that's in the waiting room with you that they have something for you, but you won't even speak. You won't even say hello. You're trying to find everything to do to avoid human interaction. And I'm saying to you that when God is in control of your life, Say some, somebody say, God, be in control, be in control. When God is in control of your life, he's putting you in places for reasons. And everything is not about you. Sometimes it's him trying to get something to somebody else through you. So he'll have you to wait to get the tires changed. He'll have you to wait at the kids basketball practice. He'll have you to wait in line at the grocery store because that's the place that God wants you. It goes back to point number one. What does God ask you to do? When you wake up in the morning, you say, oh my God, use me, Lord. I just wanna be used to your glory. Whatever you wanna do with me today, God, whoever you want me to speak to, whatever you want me to do. Well, you gotta be paying attention. 
Because when God is speaking to you, he's speaking to you for others. Somebody say, God is talking to me for somebody else. Point number two, comparison is dangerous. Let God be your lane assist. Let him gently guide you back to where he wants you to be because it's easy to get off track. And point number three, what's on your table? What's on your table? Sometimes uh, we get to a point in life where we're waiting for our food, right? Or maybe our food has come. And we're so worried about what's on such and such as table. Well, where, what did they get? And what did she order? And I didn't get that. I didn't see that on the menu. Your food is getting cold. You haven't even touched what you ordered. You haven't even partaken with the people who are sitting in front of you because you're so worried about what's going on everywhere else but at home. What's on your table? Whatever God has put on your table, that's what he wants you to pay attention to. Oh my gosh. Whatever God has put on your table, we're talking about waiting. And when God asks us to wait, whatever God has put on your table, that's where he wants your attention. That goes back up here to head down, eyes up, eyes forward. When God put something on your table, that's what he wants you to pay attention to. What's on your table? Is pregnancy on your table? Pay attention to your body. Is ministry on your table? Get in your word, fast and pray. Is, is owning a business on your table? Do what you need to do to under, understand your industry. Is divorce on your table? Maybe God is asking you to unyoke yourself with someone he never hooked you up with in the first place. My God. Is paying attention to your kids on the table. Maybe something's going on with them that they're not comfortable saying and speaking out loud to you. You're watching now live later on. Put it in the comments. Say, I'm paying attention to what's on my table. What's on my table? So many scriptures talk about the table and we know that God has given us some specific scriptures in Psalm about him preparing a table for us in the presence of our enemies. And I think a lot of times we want to focus on the presence of our enemies part, going back to being nosy. You so worried about your enemy that you don't even understand the first part of that sentence was God prepares a table for you. How about that? Don't worry about it being in the presence of your enemies. Don't worry about showing off. Don't worry about making sure everybody sees what you're wearing this week. Make sure that you are paying attention to what's on your table. Your blessings are going to be served at your table, not at your neighbor's table. Not at, at, not at your sister, your brother, your pastor's table, not at your CEO's table, not at the table down the street. God's going to bring your blessings to your table. That's why you have to stay focused. You have to pay attention because waiting, there's something to it. And I believe that God is speaking to us in this season of this part of the year that we need to be making sure we're doing what we're supposed to do in the waiting season, because the word there is season. That means that there's going to be a time's up. You've been prepared. You had time to study. Now it's time to take this test. Are you ready? Can you pass? Do you know the information? Sometimes God will just let the season end. And what you should have had been doing, you're not ready for he told you six months, get yourself together. Your lease is running out. It's time for you to buy a house. You over here doing other things. Now it's time for you to move and you can't season up. Guess what you're going to have to do? Somebody say repeat, repeat. It's always at your own table. Whatever God has for you, it's at your own table. Somebody say it's at my own table. Point number one, what is God asking you to do? Keep your head down. Keep your eyes forward. Stay away from comparison. It's very, very dangerous. 
It leads to envy. It leads to jealousy. God wants to be your lane assist. Meaning when he knows that you're getting over here in the wrong lane, he wants to gently pull us back. The Bible tells us that, that he's a good shepherd, right? And his rod and his staff, they guide us. That's good guidance right there. He's, he's telling you when, when you off course, I'm trying to pull you back over here. Now I could just jerk the wheel and make you do what I want you to do, but I want you to do it on your own. God wants you to win. Somebody say, God wants me to win. The third thing is, What's on your table? What's on your table? Have you even looked? Sometimes you're asking for a condiment that's right on the table. Is there any salt? It's on the table, sir. God, do I have uh, what it takes for me to, to apply for this loan? It's right there, baby. God, I, I need somebody to assist me with this next part of my business. Call such and such. It's on the table. God will always put your blessings on your, on your table. All right. Those three went by fast, but it has been 25 minutes. Well, y'all know what I got to do. What we get to do, what I'm so honored to do every week is to give you the word of God. Why? Because the word of God is free. It costs you nothing. The word of God is free and it costs you nothing. It just costs you time. And it's so valuable. It's so rewarding. So let's get over here in Psalm 37, verse seven. David says it this way. He says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. He's giving us two commandments there. He's telling us to rest. What does that mean? Relax. Sit down. Be still. Be still. Stop being nosy. Rest in God. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. You get all worked up. You're getting all excited. Rest, rest in the Lord. Let your body relax. Let your spirit get calm. Rest in the Lord. And then he says, and wait patiently for him. What does that mean? While I'm waiting, I don't need to be like, all right, God, hurry up. It's been two minutes. It's, you, uh, I'm about to be 30. I'm about to be 40. I'm about to be 50. Like God don't know when our birthdays are. <laughs> Like he's confused about when our birthdays are. Seriously, that must be how we sound to him. I'm almost 35. God's like, yeah, I know. I was there when you came out. <laughs> I created you in your mother's womb. I know exactly how old you are. I know exactly what's going on in your life. I still want you to wait patiently for me. The second part of that verse, 37 and 7, David says, don't fret because of him who prospers in his way. Another way to look at that is don't be nosy because you don't know what your neighbor did to get what they got. I'm going to say that again. He said, don't fret because of him who prospers in his way. This whole chapter, chapter 37, I encourage you to read it tonight. Listen to it if you have an audio Bible, but just think about what David is saying. He's saying, rest, be still, God got you. Wait patiently on the Lord. He knows what he's doing. And while you're waiting, stop being nosy. Worry about your own self. What's on your table? Stay in your lane. Keep your head down. Keep your eyes forward because this season will end. And the question will then be, are you really ready? Are you really ready for the blessing that you keep asking God for? Are you really prepared? Because nothing good is coming without a sacrifice. Get comfortable in waiting. Don't rush that process. Because whatever's next is going to require more of you. Whatever God has next for you is going to require you to be more mature, to be more sound, to be more a person of integrity. Because if God has asked you to wait, which is back to the original topic, when God asks you to wait, if God has asked you to wait, it's because abundance is on the way. I feel that. Can somebody put that in the comments? Say abundance is on the way. If God has asked you to wait, I want you to get to a position where you're saying, God, thank you for making me wait 
Thank you for making me sit down and rest and hear and listen and work out all of these things about myself so that as I'm walking in this abundance, I'm ready to handle the million dollars. I'm ready to handle a man of God or a woman of God. I'm ready to help my child go to the next level. I'm ready to open my business doors and not worry about closing them because I waited on you, God. God's got us waiting because abundance is on the way. I, I believe that with all my heart. Abundance is on the way. Somebody put that in the comments. Say abundance is on the way. God is going to bring abundance to his people. God is going to open up the windows of heaven and he's going to pour out on us blessings that we won't have room enough to receive. Deuteronomy 26, 27, and 28 are about to become real. We are going to be the head and not the tail. We are going to have our cups running over. We are about to be in a season where people are going to know our name in the cities and in the field, in the country and out here where don't nobody else know us. God is about to put our names in the mouths of people who we have never even met yet. God is about to move in such a way that abundance and our blessings are going to overtake us. He's positioning you to wait because he wants you he wants you ready. He wants you strong. He wants you secure because the blessing of the Lord is on the way. And it's going to require you to be mature to handle God's blessing. It's going to require you to love in a deeper way. To be done with all of the things that we see on social media about relationship goals, it's about to be real relationship goals. He's going to want to make sure that you know how to pray over your spouse, the word. That happens when you wait. God is moving you from a position, I believe this with all my heart, that you will have no more lack in your life. And not because it's cute and it's catchy and we say it when we lay our offering at the altar but because that's what's next for the season. The season of harvest is upon us. And he's asking you now, while I got you sitting down, stop being nosy, do your work, be ready, be ready because abundance is coming. It's coming like rain and it's not gonna let up because it's for you, it's for your family, it's for your household, it's for the people that you employ, it's for the people that are in your circle. Every day, you should be asking God, why am I waiting, Lord? What do you want me to do while I'm waiting? Help me to stay focused while I'm waiting. Keep me in my lane while I'm waiting. Help me to be ready for the abundance that's coming while I'm waiting. I'm going to end with this. I really just feel in my spirit that there is a season where people are writing and they're doing a lot of writing of books and they're sharing their testimony through their written word. And God is saying he wants you to continue that process. Maybe somebody has thought about stopping because their testimony is a little, uh, what do we say? Not good. Maybe you have gotten to a point where you're in the writing process and you feel like you're stuck because you don't want to uncover and you don't want to share everything because you don't want people to look at you differently. And I hear the Lord saying, for those of you who are writing your testimony and the book is about your life, this is for someone. If it's for you, say it's for me. Just go and grab it. God is saying, write all of it. Tell everything. Don't leave out any little detail because it's going to release you. It's going to free you and it's going to set somebody else free. Amen. 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 Well, listen, you know, my goal always is to be obedient to what God is wanting us to do. And the question of the month is when God asks you to wait, what are you supposed to be doing? Stop being nosy. That's what you're supposed to be doing. 
point one is what is God asking you to do? Keep your head down, keep your eyes forward. Number two is don't compare because it gets really, really dangerous when we do that. God wants to be our lane assist. He wants to nudge us back to the right position. And then remember whatever is on your table, that's where God's going to bring your blessings. He knows what table you're at. You know, when you go to the restaurant and they have the little the little um, stanion and they put your number there, God knows what your number is. So he's not con he's not confused. He knows what he's doing. The scripture of the night was Psalm 37 and 7. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. And don't fret because of those who prosper in their way, especially if what they're doing is evil. Listen, guys, it's been so good. I don't know who's in the comments. I, I just try to flow with the Holy Spirit. If you are looking for my products, they're at uh, curesheree.com. Cure means shining light. And Sheree means beloved. What's up, Mike? Mike Whitley said, it's going to require us to be mature for God's abundant blessing. So, so super true. So, so super true. Um, Tanika says, fast and pray, learn my industry. It's so important that we are doing what God has asked us to do and that we're prepared because we're paying attention. Uh, concierge living, listen, if you are in need of a caterer, because there's weddings and there's funerals and there's uh, corporate events and sometimes there's baby showers and all of the things that we need food for. Check out Concierge Living. Uh, Dewana O'Gwen is the owner of that business and she's here in Kansas City. She lays it out. Somebody says she lays it out. Make sure you hit her up. If you are in need of something that she uh, can provide for you, lots of good stuff. We love Dewana. Hello, Miss Murphy. She said, tell it, Kira. So good to see you tonight, Miss Murphy. Christina McCulley says, I haven't seen them all, but I'm here today. That is so good. Thank you, Christina, for bringing that up. Um, is it Christina? No, I think it's Christiana. Christiana McCulley. Maybe? I hope so. Christiana, let me just say this to you. Thank you so much for bringing that out. Um, Naya Musi, Naya Musi, my friend Naya Musi, she asked me about uh, the recordings. Are these recorded? And they are. And I, I load them up to my YouTube page. I'm not very good at keeping up with my YouTube page, um, but I will put it in the comments. And so you guys can go to YouTube and you can watch them there. Listen, guys, I'm done. I believe the Lord is finished with me for tonight. This was week three. Um, and one of the things I want you to remember is your blessing will be served at your table. Stop being nosy. Mind your own business. Mind your own business and wait on the Lord. God is with all of us. You all be good. Be safe. It's your girl, Kira Sheree. Kira means shining light and Sheree means beloved. I'll see you next time. Peace.